Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a weird Gibson from the mid to late 70s. This is known as the S1. Now the S1 was partnered with another guitar called the Marauder. They were basically the very early versions of a Gibson Studio. These and the L6S was basically Gibson's very early attempt at a lower end studio model. Now, these things evolved throughout the years and were eventually replaced by the Sonics, which was replaced by a few other models before actually becoming a studio in 1983. But these things are a beautiful piece of Gibson history. If you are a diehard Gibson fan and you just don't want to own a Fender for whatever reason, these things give you Fender-esque tones. I mean, they're not perfect, but they're very close. The S1 is pretty much what I consider Gibson's Stratocaster. You have three pickups here designed by Bill Lawrence that are kind of single coil like. And then the Marauder is like the Gibson Telecaster. You kind of have a humbucker looking pickup up here and then a slanted single coil sized pickup. So the S1, not to be confused with the Bullet series from Fender. I know after learning the history of the Fender Bullets, I get these confused all the time. I want to call them an S3 now because the S3 from Fender had three pickups and the S2 had two. But then this is called the S1 and it has three. So that can kind of get confusing if you know multiple brands. Now these guitars, similar to the L6S, has a rotary switch. However, the S1 only has four positions versus the six on the L6S. The very first position is the neck and middle pickup. Position number two is the middle and bridge. Position three is all three of them on. And number four is finally the neck and bridge out of phase. So that can give you quite a few different tones. However, you can never really just single out one of these pickups. They are always kind of blended in with each other. Now, if this rotary switch is controlling what pickups are on, what the heck is this thing for? This is a two-way switch. I know it looks like a three-way toggle switch, but it's only two. You've got it on and you've got it off. Now, when you have this in the off position, the rotary switch works the way it should. However, if you activate it, it bypasses the rotary switch and goes straight to the bridge. So if you need like a scream and solo, it doesn't matter what position this thing is on, you're on the bridge pickup now. So that's kind of a handy little feature. And then you have a master volume and master tone with your output jack here on the front. For this guitar, the only thing I hate is the output jack on the front. I wish they would have drilled it onto the side. And you can still do that if you want to make it a player's grade version. Now these guitars, once again, they have bolt-on necks. A lot of people reject these guitars because it's a bolt-on neck Gibson. These things are a lot better than a Sonics. I'll tell you that. So if you had a bad experience with a Sonics guitar, uh, don't compare these to those. These are a lot better guitars. And you can find them with rosewood fretboards or maple fretboards. That's another reason why I really like the Marauder and S1 series, is they are an inexpensive way to get into a maple fretboarded Gibson. I'm kind of a Gibson fanatic if you guys haven't noticed, but I love maple fretboards for whatever reason. I like the lacquer on them, but they are very difficult to find on Gibsons. And the newer Gibson Customs that do have maple fretboards, they don't lacquer them for some reason, and I hate that. So the S1, and Marauder and L6S are kind of not well loved by the collector community. Gibson did try to market these as best as they could to make them popular by giving them to famous musicians such as Carlos Santana and Ronnie Mack. And Kiss would actually get the factory seconds and Paul Stanley at the very end of his gig would swap out his very nice Les Paul for one that looks the same and smash them and those were usually factory seconds. So these things kind of have a smash history behind them, more so the Marauder than the S3, but they are beautiful pieces of Gibson history. Now, I would say the S1 is a little less common to find than the Marauder. 
Judging by what I've seen on the market in the past five to six years, there were definitely a lot more Marauders out there, or they just change hands more often than the S1. These things can be a little bit tricky to actually find at any given point in time. Sometimes there'll be like three or four on the market, and then sometimes there is a dry spell for like six months. Now, I'm not saying these things are rare. You can definitely find them if you want one, but they are a little less common to come by compared to the L6S and the Marauder. So overall, yes, check one of these things out if you like Fender-esque tones, but want it with a Gibson. These things are kind of unique because they have the flying V headstock and they sound like a Fender, but trust me on this one, I like these guitars. and features a 60s neck profile. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the condition of this one. All right, face of the headstock. You can see there's tons of scratches from string changes. You've got some chipping around the tuners and you kind of got this weird area right here. What it feels like is there's like super glue on top of the finish. But besides that, you just kind of have some edge wear that I could touch up if you want me to. I've got one of those black touch up pens that would make that look a little bit better. Or you might like this road worn vibe. You have your original S1 truss rod cover. Truss. The truss rod works just fine. However, the nut has been replaced. This nut wasn't really glued on properly. I would say it sticks out a little bit more on the base side of the neck, whereas it falls a little bit short on the treble side. So you might want to uh, knock that over a little bit and then it would be in great shape. 
Now these tuners have definitely been replaced. These originally came with like the Flying V style tuners. These ones are of the same era. They're Schaller branded and they have the uh, pearl tips on here. The fretboard on this example is rosewood and it's in pretty good shape. I would say the worst part here is on the base side, second fret. You can see you've kind of got a ding in the fretboard. You might be able to uh, steam that one out a little bit, but that kind of looks more like a small little chunk to me rather than like a large impression. But other than that, I don't see any like giant divots in the fretboard like sometimes you will find because these are just great playing guitars. A lot of people do fall in love with them. Now the frets do show some considerable wear. I don't think you have to worry about them for now, but they do have some flattening. So you might want to think about getting a level recrown job sometime in the next three or five years. Now the body's kind of trashed. It's got a lot of finish checking, nicks and dings. This was definitely a player's guitar. Here we can see in this area where there is a large chip off the top dings and finish checking and this is kind of a dark maroon color not quite wine red almost like a reddish brown it's kind of got an interesting color to it but lots of nicks and dings scratches and edge wear on this example here you can see it is a one two and a three piece body but you can see lots of finish checking and nicks and dings overall The back of the headstock shows you the model S1, made in USA, serial number 00-177541, and that 00 means this was made in 1976, 06 means 1977, and 99 means 1975. Those were the only years that a decal like this was used. Now here you can see these tuners look a little bit wonky. And that's because these are actually six on a side tuners installed on a three per side guitar. So that's why these guys are upside down. But you can see the original tuner holes are still present. If you wanted to switch this back to like a Clouson styled or the original Flying V type tuners. Now right here, it looks like there was a store identification thing on there at one point in time that was removed. And you've got some finish checking in this area, but no breaks, cracks, or repairs to speak of, thankfully. Now, a scarf joint on a Gibson would usually make me go, hey, that's fake. But no, that's just kind of how some of these were made. They were a lower end model, so they did cut costs with things like scarf joints. But a beautiful maple neck here. You've got some light impressions and dings and finish kind of worn off. But for the most part, it's in good shape and offers a 60s slim neck profile. The back definitely shows you this thing was well played and gigged. It's got buckle worming marks and impressions pretty much all over. This is definitely not a collector S1. However, I don't think there's a lot of collectors out there collecting S1s. These are just really fantastic players' guitars. So overall, it is definitely a worn, beast that has been on the road. One thing to look out for on these is the neck pocket cracks. Usually there can be a crack there and it's just superficial in the finish or it could be in the wood and it doesn't affect the guitar that much but it's always good to check and pay accordingly. So lots of wear along the edges of the guitar and the strap buttons have been swapped out to kind of a uh, aftermarket style not a strap lock or anything though. All right, let's take a look at this guitar under black light to make sure there's been no repairs. Face of the headstock, you're in good shape. Looking at this, that kind of tells me that might be like super glue. I'm not really 100% sure on that, but you can see the original lacquer is still underneath and you can see those finish checking lines here a little bit better. I like the way it kind of runs through the Gibson logo. I think it looks cool. Here you can see on the body where there is some clear coat wear from the guy's sweaty arm being rubbing against it like that. But other than the few nicks and dings, this definitely is looking good under black light. The knobs are glowing the way they should, as are the pickups. The neck is also glowing the way I would expect it to. You can see once again where a sticker was over this for a long period of time. 
and that just feels like dirt to me. I didn't clean this guitar prior to doing this because, because I've got a pawn shop actually coming over. They were a little light on inventory, so they just wanted to buy a bunch of my lower end stuff. But everything's glowing the way I would expect it to. Again, you just have your average wear and tear along the edges. Now, if there was a neck repair, you'd be able to see it right here, but there is not. And surprisingly, you don't have a lot of finish missing off this neck. Back of the guitar, honestly, it black lights a lot better than I thought it would. It glows a little bit more in this area because of sweat. And here, obviously, you have some buckle rash. Sides of the guitar are in good shape. Again, that glows a little differently because it's dirty. You got a little bit of wear there, probably from a strap or something. But, I mean, this is the condition I like to see these guitars in that they were actually played because these are phenomenal guitars. They're not traditional by any means, but I love them. This guitar does come in an era correct case. This is a Gibson case that has been kind of modified. What this looks and feels like to me is somebody removed the outer Tolex where it usually says Gibson right here. And this is just kind of the bare wood that they painted a black color. You can kind of see the wood underneath here because the latches are correct. They've just been painted black. Uh, you have this, and this looks like the handle has been replaced because these usually would have been rivets instead of screws. But all the latches are exactly what they should be. You also have one on the back here. But once you open this case up, that's when you go, yep, that's a Gibson case. That is the 70s red color that you're looking for. You've got your foam padding there. You even have your lid ribbons. This is definitely a Gibson case that has been heavily modified. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this Gibson S1, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Troglys, T-R-O-G-L-Y-S. Thank you, Troglys, for tuning in today, and we will see you tomorrow. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Take care.